Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's time for another drive time rant. Now, this time around, I'm doing a bit of an, an experiment because I've got a new Asden brand wireless uh, mic. It's not generally for this um, uh, drive time rant, but I thought I'd try it anyway. So I've got this little lavalier microphone here and uh, I thought I'd, I'd give it a go. So I have no idea if the audio is going to work, but let's try it. Anyway, I thought it'd be mailbag time and this is where I answer some email that I've gotten that instead of just sending a personal reply or uh, just ignoring them because I don't have enough time, I thought um, they were interesting questions that would be of interest to more than just them. So I thought I'd answer them. Now, sorry I forget usernames and things like that. I'm hopeless, so I can't remember who posted these in. But the first one is that uh, somebody emailed in and said, um, I'm a student in Australia, studying engineering, going to finish soon, and should I, um, should they, uh, stay in Australia or go overseas to work? And I thought that was a really interesting question. And they also wanted to know what the state of the electronics industry in Australia was. Now, I thought that was really interesting too. Now, I don't have a prepared answer for this, but um, there is, uh, well, I've always been of the general opinion, I've been saying it for many years, that the electronics industry in Australia is, is going downhill but this is what has been for the last 20 30 years um, and in terms of manufacturing uh, that is that is uh, that is correct because we used to manufacture a whole bunch of stuff here our own TVs and consumer goods and stuff like that and well we still do manufacture some white goods and stuff like that but really the as everyone knows the, the entire industry has changed over the last 20 odd years or so it's now all outsourced and all the manufacturing's in China and whatnot and uh, you know so it's not really the fact that Australia's industry has gone downhill in that respect it's just it's just the natural global um, shift in the industry towards China so nothing unusual there but is the Australian electronics industry any good and from a design perspective I'd say yes, it still is. There's still some excellent design opportunities in Australia, and there always have been. And there's been quite a bit of uh, resurgence lately in this. Um, a lot of because China's actually becoming um, quite expensive, um, and also a lot of design is going to China. But it's still um, there's there's a lot of change that's. Um, uh, that's happening in most uh, most countries I think where you know they're trying to keep design in-house like in the US they're trying to pull back um, all the R&D back into the country and to manufacture things in the US well that's happening in Australia too so you could say there's almost a little mini boom on at the moment for electronics engineers now um, as always as an electronics design engineer there will always be a niche market and a niche job for you if you're good. I mean, there's just no doubt about that. You could easily um, have some interesting work and have a good career here in Australia. But that being said, I haven't answered this person's question, should they go overseas to work? And my simple answer to that is yes, do it while you're young and to get the experience and while travel while you can because <laughs> Not only from um, just, you know, uh, from an interesting, um, you know, a life, uh, you know, experience kind of aspect to it, living and working in another country, uh, but mark my words, okay, the next oil crisis is, is coming, right? It's cometh. <laughs> and peak oil is here, make no mistake about it. And if you think that um, the world is going to be the same in... T this is a general rant here. Sorry, I'm getting a bit askew, but uh, I've got to say it. It's one of my pet topics. If you think that the industry is going to be... Uh, well, if you think that it's going to be... Our lifestyle is going to be the same in 15, 20 years, you are kidding yourself. Oil is going to get massively more expensive. Oil is dirt cheap. For those 
dickheads who complain about the price of oil, you have no friggin' idea. Trust me, you're an absolute and utter dickhead. Now, um, <laughs> it's gonna get a lot more expensive and you know, uh, international travel is the cheapest it will ever be. So get out, if you're young, get out, travel the world and experience things before uh, before it's, you know, it becomes too expensive to do that. Now, if you can get um, a job that will pay for, um, that involves travel, an engineering job that involves travel, and there's quite a lot of them in niche uh, markets and big markets everywhere. Um, you don't have to just be in sales to get and, um, you know, to get a job with travel, then take it. Take it with both hands and make somebody else pay for you traveling around the world. Um, there'll be nothing better that you'll ever do in your whole life. I, I guarantee it. Now, I've lived and worked in Sydney all my life. I got my first job when I was 17 in Sydney and I'm still here and this is where I live and this is where I want to live and this is where I work. And I've traveled a few times for work here and there, but generally I've had to pay my own way. And well, that's not nearly as fun as having work pay for it. So, um, yeah, I highly, highly recommend just get out there and do it. Now, if you're going overseas, go overseas and work. I'd recommend going overseas and try and get a job at a big company because if you want to work in a niche little company, you can do that here in Australia. In fact, that's probably all you're going to get here in Australia is niche industries. I mean, uh, there's so many more opportunities in, say, the US and Europe than there are here in Australia. If you think that, you know, you can have a career in Australia designing oscilloscopes for Agilent, well, you know, it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, there's, uh, jobs are more niche in Australia, the markets are more niche. You might work, end up working for a little medical devices company or a small engineering company or making their own niche little products or something like that, but there are no, generally speaking, there are no huge no, well, there's not too many huge players here in Australia. I can name a couple. You know, Dolby have their research labs here in Sydney. Canon do a lot of this. Uh, uh, Canon have their research labs here in Sydney as well. They do a lot of stuff and things like that. But, um, you know, generally speaking, you'll get a lot more opportunity overseas. And that's just obvious. The nature of, a, you know, living and working in Australia. There's nothing new there at all. So, yeah, get out while you can. Um, so the industry in Australia is still pretty good. Now, uh, probably the end of that rant. Now the second mailbox, I hope I've helped you there by the way. Um, this is just a stream of consciousness rant. Now the second mailbox, um, once again I forget the username, sorry, but uh, they messaged me and they said I'm a, I study mechatronics. Um, and I'm having a hard time uh, fitting in and you know people sort of leave me out because I'm I don't sort of specialize in anything I don't think that was the general gist of his question and specifically asked how can I um, uh, how can I prepare myself for working in the real world now this just doesn't go for mechatronics but I'll give you my view um, opinion of the mechatronics industry now well Mechatronics is, um, I, it's a very good, um, a very good field to study. It combines electronics, mechanical stuff. Now, I'm an electronics design engineer, but I've worked on my fair share of mechanical stuff. Let me tell you, and I've probably got some future blogs on it. I've, I've, you know, developed my own um, drop and vibration test jigs. There's, you know, and and acoustic jigs and all sorts of things that. Um, uh, all sorts of mechanical stuff, machine automated PCB machine loaders and stuff like that. There's a lot of mechanical aspect to electronics engineering and don't kid yourself about it. So um, it's really good um, getting a degree in mechatronics because it gives you that sort of, you know, generalist background. Um, well, hopefully, you know, I'm of the opinion that you don't necessarily learn much, if anything at all, at university, but that's another argument entirely. Anyway, um, so mechatronics is good, but what you can do to prepare yourself for the real world, and I've said this over and over again, many you know, in in many blogs I think, is to 
um, is to actually get out there and do your own stuff. Don't rely on what you're going to learn in university or what projects you're going to work on there. Do your own stuff. Work on your own projects. Get them published. Um, you know, uh, make your own blog. Do, you know, do whatever. But start working, start designing and developing your own projects or join some open source projects. Go to a, go to a hacker space or something like that and see if you can join in other people's uh, projects in the real world. And, you know, that will teach you that will prepare you for the real world. Now, um, when it comes down to, oh, I don't quite fit in, you know, because I don't specialize in anything or something, well, you know, uh, being a generalist is good. I consider myself pretty much a, a generalist. I'm, you know, I'm pretty good in some, I'm really good in some areas that I specialize in, but, you know, others I just have, a, you know, a useful generic knowledge of and that's real handy but ultimately in electronics and or the engineering business you've, you've ultimately got to specialize in at least a couple of things so that you're more useful than just a general you know you know gopher going about the lab just doing odd jobs you know you, you really have to specialize in something so I would find something that you like and you think you're, you're pretty good at be it, be it programming you know embedded programming or be it uh, PCB design or or uh, you know building mechanical test jigs if you're into mechatronics and you enjoy building robots or something you know specialize in electromechanical motor drives or you know it, it, it doesn't matter what but find at least a couple of areas to specialize in so there you go I hope that's uh, helped you out now um, that's the end of the mail bag I've probably got more but I can't think of them now I'm actually um, upload I've uh, you may have noticed maybe some slight changes in the videos in the last uh, the last couple of videos that's because I was trialing Pinnacle uh, Studio HD software and I was playing around with that trial but um, I don't think I'm going to switch to that what I'm now going to trial as of this video is uh, ULead uh, Video Studio X3 now I'm currently using X2 and I didn't know there was an X3 which is a bit silly but it's been out for a while so I just downloaded the trial and it looks really good so I'm going to switch to Video Studio X3 and it comes with music and stuff like that so I can actually um, add music again to my um, videos no problem to the intro and stuff like that so um, yeah it's um because I, I think you because I've been using ULead Video Studio for many years now I've done all my Virtually, I've done every blog video up until the last couple in it. I've done, uh, you know, all sorts of, um, all sorts of, you know, travel, you know, all my personal travel videos and stuff like that, and weddings, and I've edited it all in ULead Video Studio. I, right? I think it's a really easy to use package. So I think I'm just going to upgrade that and not switch. Now I hope this uh, wireless mic works and should be better than the um, than the Rode shotgun mic the road video mic I was using but it doesn't have a uh, high pass filter on it but um, it shouldn't get in should get shouldn't get too much low frequency rumble because it's mounted on me and it's pretty loose it's not rigidly mounted to the car and I think I've given up on that tripod um, sorry the uh, windscreen mount thing because it just picks up too much vibration so I've just got my tripod here and it's attached to the dash with some tape and uh, it sits on the floor and it seems to work quite well. So that's uh, the mailbag and some updates and I'll catch you next time.